the way we started today in terms of working on the Le Chatelier shifts is to put up this little basic equation of red, blue, and Arby's. Reds, blues, and Arby's. I'm saying it like Arby's roast beef because it makes it a little more fun. Anyway, so now I'm going to start messing with these guys. And I'm going to ask students whether we are doing a right shift or a left shift. Those two guys came together. Those two guys came together. And those two guys came together. And this is what I'm going to refer to as the equilibrium position. So, Elise, in doing what I just did, did I do a right shift or a left shift? Okay, why may why do you think it's a right shift? Um, Just guessed or Ah, okay, let me change what I have up here because it could have looked like this. Now what would you say? See, you're focusing on the wrong thing. The position of the molecules doesn't make any difference. And don't feel bad about it because everybody's had the same problem every period today. Okay? What do you think, Paul? Okay. I'm doing the things that this equation says I should do to do a right shift. I just did a right shift. And a right shift has nothing to do with where the molecules are. It has everything to do with who came together or who broke apart. Okay? So, these guys, the reds and the blues by themselves, are representing the left side of the equation. The Arby's, where we have a red connected to a blue, are the right side of the equation. So, what I did is I took the reds and the blues and made Arby's. All right, let's try someone else. Alec, this one's for you. What did I just do? Was I a right shift or was I a left shift? Sure you do. What did I do? Did I put Arby's together or take them apart? Okay. When they are taken apart, will they be shown on the right side of the equation? Ah, okay. That's the direction of the shift. Because Arby's aren't there anymore. Let's try it again. It's a little bit of a trick question, so watch it. Okay, I am done. Ashley, what did I do? A right or a left shift? I did a right shift? Why did I do a right shift? 
I made Arby's oh, without the roast beef. <laughs> okay, so are we are we starting to get the idea? Let's do this with just one, two, and get all the rest of the stuff out of the way. Just kind of over here, and let's let's take this space out here. And now let's simplify my question. Okay, I'm going to go to Jocelyn. Okay, so Jocelyn, would you tell me, what do I have when I do this? I do, I have a right shift. And Judith, what do I do when I'm doing this? That is a left shift. So anytime, and, and let's let's represent the products and reactants with the actual atoms and molecules. So whenever I do this, I'm right shifting. Whenever I do this, I'm left shifting. But the molecules and, and atoms can be anywhere. Okay? So let's take the same four guys and let's go over here. What am I doing? Class? That's a right shift because I'm making our bees. I make our bees by shifting to the right. Okay. As I shift to the right, one of the reds and one of the blues have collided. Okay? And it can be any number of them you like because the actual balanced equation just says that the recipe to make RBs is to put one R with one B. That's the recipe. But with molecules, things come together and break apart. And let's just do a quick um, simulation video type thing. And to do that, uh, let's see if I've got it up here. Tesla's. No, not there. No. Uh, okay, I don't have it. Let's go to yesterday's homework page. And I'm going to invoke... Uh, that, that Firefox, sure. Let's look at this one more time. This is equilibrium. And I've gone to uh, Mr. Kent's page, his homework page. Uh, he's a high school chemistry teacher also. And I'll have to activate my Adobe Flash so that it will allow that to work. Okay, that's not the one I wanted. Here it is. Okay. So we start, and we start with the reactants and the products. Maybe you'll look at this in a little bit different way today. We saw this yesterday. And has anything happened yet besides moving around? Oh, there we go. You see? How many products do I have? One, two, three, four. Okay? Now we're going to continue. Oh, look at that. Oh, we just made more. And it appears that some of them, we made four new ones. And what is the net result when we're done? Oh, look at that. How many products do I have now? And you see that last minute change there? Okay. Count them. We've got uh, RB here, RB here, RB here, and RB here. So we hit equilibrium, we left equilibrium, we got back to equilibrium. 
and the net result is that the concentrations overall for the multi-billion trillion gazillion molecules that are in the vessel each of them represented by one atom okay they are all doing this thing back and forth all the time so the equilibrium is dynamic because it keeps going to the left and going to the right I'm sorry your right is there okay so going to the left and going to the right okay and now we just go ahead and we'll look at some actual examples and hopefully we'll be able to get a better idea today than we had yesterday about what these this animation is going to mean and let's go back and go to here yeah okay now let's watch and see what the actual reaction is going to be I have this as a picture in my whiteboard file and I'm going to go there and I'm going to do another manipulation type thing here we go and then we'll, we'll watch it actually work What did I just do? This goes to, uh, he's not with us. Daniel, what did I just do? Did I do a left or a right shift? Huh? All right, I'll do it again. We had iron here and thiocyanide here. Okay, so what I did is I moved it like this. And these two guys came together. That is definitely a left shift. Okay, so if I had them over here, and I have the black background so you can actually see these guys. Okay, let's see. Did this? Yes. Okay, and I'm going to put this guy over here as well. What did I just do, Paul? A right shift, of course. And now I've got it oriented the same way as the equation. And what we're going to see in just a moment is what happens when we add something to the mix. Okay? So let's look at it. I'm going to add SCN, NASCN. So if I add this, essentially all I'm adding in relationship to this equation, this equation, do you see sodium in the equation? No. So if I add sodium thiocyanide, as far as the equation is concerned, the only thing I'm adding is thiocyanide. Okay? So let's watch what happens. What is your prediction about this particular bar? Is it going to go up or down? Up. Okay. Good. And when Lachat starts working on it, what's going to happen? It'll go back down. So let's watch it happen that just like we predicted and whoop look see these two go down and they're making this stuff now look over here at the color of this thing let's go back notice the color changed a lot didn't it okay here we go does it make a color change before the shot starts uh -uh. No, as soon as the shot starts, that's when the color change happens. Let's go back, try it again. Watch. Okay. The shot's starting now. See? Color change immediate. Because when this went down, watch it, watch this again, only this time, watch this bar. That's the signal that tells you something has happened that you can observe from outside the reaction chamber. Watch. Okay. Now, see this guy? See it? There it goes. So, when this guy and this guy get together, okay, we could say it, this guy and this guy are getting together, they are making a left shift. Is this making sense? A little bit easier now? Okay, let's go and do some problems that have to do with concentration. This is where you're going to use that sheet. 
that you picked up as a handout today. Here, come on. Where are we? We need to go back here. There we are. So, here goes your little sheet. What I'd like you to do is write down the first two practice questions. <laughs> and basically what the page number is for is to identify an assignment. And your assignment for tonight, you, why don't you just go ahead and put all these in right now. I'll stop the recording. So to see the rest of today's lesson, you have to go to part two of this video.